Hey guys, what's up? So OnePlus as a brand has always associated itself with speed ever since the OnePlus 6. The OnePlus 6 came with the slogan, the speed you need, the 60 was unlock the speed, the 7 was go beyond speed and so on. You get the point. With the OnePlus 8T taking the moniker of lead with speed, we can only imagine what the next slogan for the OnePlus 8T series would be. The speed in OnePlus world is not only restricted to the phone itself, but the time required to charge the phone as well with the help of their fast chargers. With the OnePlus 8T series, OnePlus is preparing to launch a 65W fast charger that they may market as Super Warp Charge. Also the specs of the Galaxy Tab S7 and S7 Plus have leaked and they do look nice. So a lot of you would know that OnePlus, Oppo and Vivo are sister companies that operate under BBK Electronics, so a lot of machinery and technology is shared among the three brands. One such technology has been the charging solution developed by Oppo known as Vogue Charge which is rebranded by OnePlus and was initially known as Dash Charge but due to some trademark issues they had to change it to Warp Charge. With the OnePlus 8 series people were expecting OnePlus to bring Oppo's 65W fast charging support on board but OnePlus chose to stick with Warp Charge 30T maybe because they might have thought of introducing it in the 8T series down the line. And that's exactly what's happening. Strings mentioning Super Warp Charge and 65W fast charger were found in the OnePlus Engineering Mode app in the Android 10 and Android 11 based OxygenOS builds by a Twitter user. Now this is a premium feature and should make its way to a premium model but we are not sure as to which OnePlus phone will get it as the McLaren partnership has officially ended. If this will make it to the OnePlus 8T Pro is not confirmed but that is the case with the phone itself as there were some rumors earlier that there won't be an 8T Pro this year. So we'll have to wait a few months to see how it goes. Fast charging solutions have become really popular in recent years but it should be kept in mind that fast charging has adverse effects on battery life and the battery health degrades pretty quickly compared to a regular charger but Oppo has maintained it does not. Even then I would recommend you to charge your phones at normal speeds if the device supports it and only fast charge if you need to. That being said the fast charging feature does come in handy in a lot of situations so it's kinda nice to have. Also there might be a new ice blue color for the OnePlus 8 series. The phone already has some pretty cool colors and this should give the consumers even more choice. Also in the news we already know that Samsung is preparing to introduce two new tablets in the Android world, the Galaxy Tab S7 and the Tab S7 Plus and now the specs of the 12.4 inch Tab S7 Plus have been revealed as the tab recently passed through Geekbench. The specs aren't really surprising actually, the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus is supposed to have 5G and hence adopts the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 SoC along with 6GB of RAM which appears to be a little less for a multimedia tablet pitched against the iPad Pro line which also has 6GB of RAM by the way but we should have more RAM and storage options. We already know the screen sizes at 11 inches and 12.4 inches for the Tab S7 and S7 Plus but these should get 120Hz refresh rate according to iSIN Universe which is of course nice to have. The 120Hz refresh rate should be really fun on a bigger display that has been present in the iPad Pro line from 2017, so finally making it to the Android side. Finally, the battery sizes is also known at 7760mAh for the smaller Tab S7 and 9800mAh for the Tab S7 Plus, which should be more than enough to power the 120Hz displays for at least a day. Also in the news, while it's known at this point that the Galaxy Note 20 will have a flat display, according to ICE, the Galaxy Note 20 will have rounded rectangular look for the display instead of the boxier Galaxy Note 10 series. Shouldn't really make a huge difference in usability but still is a departure from the boxier look on the Note series. Moving on, it's nothing new that Huawei's mobile business has been severely impacted by the US ban. The company has been struggling to survive without the Google Play services outside of China, but the latest restriction that has stopped companies like TSMC to work with Huawei is proving up to be the final nail in the coffin for the smartphone maker. And if that wasn't enough, the company which is a telecom giant first is finding it difficult to fulfill their promises of delivering 600,000 5G based stations which are manufactured by TSMC. Samsung could help Huawei in this situation as they don't use US tech to manufacture chips and hence can produce Kirin chips for Huawei but only if Huawei leaves the smartphone industry altogether. Reportedly Samsung is in talks with Huawei but they haven't accepted the offer as of now and if this happens it will clear one of the biggest roadblocks for Samsung in maintaining their lead in the smartphone industry. We'll have to wait and see as to how Huawei reacts to this but it would be difficult for them to give up on the mobile phone industry as a whole. That's it for this video, do let me know your opinions on this, smash the like button if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel for more tech videos. I will see you all in the next one, till then bye bye and stay safe.